Kelsey brothers are not the only stars from Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Miss Sean Young also went to Cleveland Heights High School. I'm pretty sure I used to dance with Sean Young at Miss Batcher's dancing school. Almost positive. My mother made me go. We met girls from other schools, though, so it was cool. I'm pretty sure she was there. At least I like to fantasize that way. In person, Sean Young is just what we expected. Outrageous. When I told some of my friends and business associates that I was coming over here to, to interview you, the first reaction from everyone was, whoa, oh, that's going to be a good one. What is that? Where does that come from? There are so few people uh, like me in the business. I'm not a person that really goes against my major instincts. I mean, my instincts have always told me the truth, and they've always been accurate. And perhaps... Um, you know, somewhere along the line, there's a, there's a slight amount of envy that I don't let, um, you know, other people take advantage of me. When a magazine or a newspaper does a, a big takeout on you, a big piece on you, they always go to your, to your high school, Cleveland Heights, and they found somebody there who said that, well, you know, Sean Young always thought that she was better than, than everybody else. Were you ever picked on when you were in high school? Definitely. But the thing, the thing that's really interesting about that is they say you either have a fight or flight, you know, response to difficulty, and mine has always been to fight. And a good example of that is uh, one time my mom and I were walking out of my building in New York City, and this guy grabbed her purse, yanked it out of her hand, and went running down the street. Well, I went running after this guy, and he's looking back at me like, this chick is following <laughs> me, right? So he jumps in this car, and I'm like say, hanging on the side of the car, <laughs> And, and, and he takes off. Finally, I let go because obviously I'm going to be hurt if I don't. And then I look down and I've completely wet my pants without even being aware of it, right? So my response to that kind of stuff is to want to fight it and to say, you know, look, I'm not afraid of you. This fight or flight thing for you, which you normally respond to by fighting, have there been times in retrospect when you look back and say, maybe I should have flown instead of fought? Perhaps in Hollywood, yeah. Yeah. I mean, people ask me about whether I should have gone and tried to meet with Tim Burton for Catwoman, right. you know. You basically showed up at his doorstep. I showed up at, not his doorstep, his office in, at Warner Brothers. Right. And um, he was there. He hid from me. He didn't, you know, because his secretary said, yeah, he's here. And then she came out and said, no, she's not here. He's not here, you know. <laughs> but when, when, it, when he wouldn't see me, when it came down to the clarity that he just wasn't going to give me five minutes, it just seemed too worm-like for me to, to cope with. And, uh, and I was right for Catwoman, so that wasn't, even, that wasn't even a question. So when I went bursting in there, it was sort of like saying, you know, I know you like to treat people badly, but like, there is somebody out here who really doesn't like it and doesn't want to take it, and you ought to be aware of that. There is an unwritten rule in Hollywood that you don't rock the boat, you don't do things like show up at Tim Burton's office uh, you know, to ask to be Catwoman, uh, you don't say things about it in interviews like this because it, they're, the people in Hollywood, the producers and the directors don't like it. Has it come back to hurt you? Well, you know, the only answer that I can really come up with for that is the fact that ultimately I don't care, you know, because my first priority in life is God, it's not show business. Like, I wake up to be an, a person of integrity to my Lord, not to what I think, uh, you know, this or that director may think of me. So whether I end up making movies for 10 more years or 15 more years or 20 more years or whatever, I know that my God is going to put me where I'm supposed to be. So, like, that carries with it great strength. And that's okay with me. Why would such a deep thinker and some, someone with such strong spirituality embrace what can many times be the insidiousness of Hollywood? Well, I was talking to my husband about that recently, you know, and I've been blackmailed, I've been framed, I've been set up, I've been harassed, I've been uh, badmouthed. I've been there and back when it comes to dealing with certain types of people in Hollywood, and there are times when I go, honey, <laughs> I really can't take this anymore. And he said, don't you think it's meaningful for people to know that there's at least one person out there who is as brave as you? And I kind of went, well, yeah, you know, 
I agree with that, and, and most of the time I do have enough courage to do that, and there are times when it makes me feel very lonely. You're a target when you're a person of courage. That's just the way it is. If you're in the front lines in battle, you're the first person people can shoot at. Your husband Robert once said, my wife speaks honestly and directly from the heart and mind, and I love her and hate her for it. <laughs> now, I understand the love part. Why would he hate you for that? Well, I think anybody who has to deal with the truth has to overcome their own fear. And, you know, he, he, he doesn't hate me. He, he hates the fact that I'm really good at making him look at the truth, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, that's what he, what he hates. <laughs> but he, it just always happens to come from me. <laughs> so he doesn't really have anybody else in his life who, who knows him as well as I do and knows, knows what he needs to look at. And actually, I don't either. I mean, he's really the only person that I have in my life besides my mom who knows how to adjust my thinking, you know, and give me, give me enough um, perspective, you know, a detached perspective on something that I need to look at. You're also famous for um, some madness that happened with James Woods. Is, the, is all of that over with now? Yeah, it's over with for sure, you know. Um, I think, I think that in terms of Hollywood, um, most, most people are able to check the source, you know, and analyze the source here because um, I'm not the first person to recognize uh, a damaged personality there. Do you ever think there'll be a time when you guys can shake hands and, and make up? Mm -mm. I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't take well to being um, framed, badmouthed, slandered, and um, lied about. I don't, I don't uh, respond well to that kind of thing. And even if he were to get down on his knees and, you know, I'm so sorry, I'd go, bless you, my boy, now go away, you know. I mean, it's, it's not my place to um, pass judgment on him, but, um, but that's not the kind of person I want around me. One thing I've learned is that it's important for me to attract honest people. How quickly can you tell if, if someone is telling the truth, if someone is an honest person? Not as quickly as I'd like to be able to. You see, when I first started working as an actress, I trusted everybody. And it used me up a little bit, you know? It kind of like, kind of scratched a little hole in my heart and made me have to look at the fact that, that there's only one person that's going to look out for me ultimately, and that's me, you know? So I want to operate from the point of view of making myself a better person in the long run so that on my deathbed, I feel good about what I've done with my life. But power corrupts. And that's, you know, that's, that's Hollywood. And that's not actually news. You know, it's just news to me. <laughs>